Today, we will go over the different types of non-union that you are bound to hear talked about or may even find yourself asked to name and explain while on rotation, so let's get right to it. A non-union in its simplest form is when there is a halt in the fracture repair process that without intervention will not go on to heal. This can be secondary to a multitude of factors, which we will go over today. There are five types that I will go over that will help you better understand the lingo surrounding non-unions on rotation. The types that we will briefly cover in this video are hypertrophic, atrophic, oligotrophic, and septic non-union along with pseudoarthrosis. First up, we have the hypertrophic non-union. This will occur when there is inadequate stability or fixation. Hypertrophic non-unions have good blood supply and thus nourishment, however fail due to too much movement at the fracture site, which doesn't allow for proper healing. Since these do have adequate nourishment, you will see substantial callus formation, which you can appreciate here in this x-ray. These are corrected with proper fixation, whether a revision procedure or initial operative approach. Next, we have atrophic nonunion. Atrophic nonunion occurs mainly due to inadequate blood supply to the fracture, whether due to a vascular or metabolic pathology. When the fracture site does not have adequate nourishment, there will be a lack of callus formation, as you can appreciate here, especially compared to the previous example. These are typically corrected with achievement of proper fixation and application of biological stimulants for bone growth, such as with bone grafting, whether an autograft taken from the iliac crest, or utilizing crushed cancellous chips, etc. Next is the oligotrophic nonunion. According to online resources, you will see this defined as inadequate reduction. However, most orthopedic surgeons and literature describe it more as a combination of atrophic and hypertrophic nonunion in that there is inadequate fixation or too much mobility at the fracture site, but there is incomplete callus formation, thus mimicking hypertrophic and atrophic nonunions respectively. Thus, this type is corrected by obtaining correct reduction with a revision procedure to correct length alignment rotation, while also using biological stimulants as needed. Next is a septic nonunion. This is exactly what it sounds like and occurs when there is osteomyelitis or surrounding infection that limits proper healing of the fracture. Inflammatory markers like CRP can be used to track the infection and a staged approach is typically employed in which the surgeon will do serial irrigation and debridements, abbreviated as INDs, in order to ensure all infected and necrotic tissue is removed. Lastly, there is pseudoarthrosis. This refers to when a fracture forms a joint-like formation where there was not a joint previously. It's a false joint, if you will. You can see an example here. In this example, there appears to be a joint-like pattern in the diaphysis of the tibia. These are fixed with a surgery to remove the non-viable ends and application of fixation for stability. Okay, I will leave it there. Here are the high-yield takeaways for each, and I will see you all in the next one.